Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me know if, yes, Amara, but you keep spelling my name wrong. I'm not called Mr. Dorjan. It's Mr. Jordan. When are we starting, Sir Samuel? Well, in about five minutes, I would say. In about five minutes or so. Morning, Omar. I'll start saying good morning to people. Please only say good morning once. It really helps me. If you keep saying good morning over and over again, then I can't see it. So who have we got? Amana is here. Amara, sorry, is here. Although she keeps calling me. Amara is here. Amara, sorry. Watch the sounds coming out of my phone now. Although she keeps calling me Mr. Jordan. I'm Mr. Jordan. Morning, Shway. Morning, Imran. Good morning, Omar. Morning, Rania. We've got morning, Mikhail Mohammed. Oh, uh, oh, Naba, sorry. Morning, Naba. Uh, morning, Samuel. Morning, Mir Maria. Or is that Amina? I'm not sure which one that one is. Morning, Labib. Uh, morning, Sadia. Morning to uh, Alicina. Morning, uh, Maria. I don't know why. For some reason, my... Phone chat isn't updating. I need to just refresh that, make sure that I've got all the chat popping through. Morning, Miss Cho, who's on? Morning to Ava. Uh, good morning, Ramin. Good morning um, to Zane. Morning, uh, Sultan Sanjar. Good to see you. What else have we got? Morning, Musa. Morning, Khalid. Morning, Said Sadia. Morning, Hiba. Oh, Doha. Good to see you. Who else have we got? Suban is here. Thank you. Good morning. Morning to Musa. Good morning, Tamin. Good morning to... Who else have we got? Are we having a lesson today, Ava? Yes, we are having a lesson today. Back to normal. Snow day is over, although the snow is still outside. Can't wait to show... Oh, do you know what? I need to go and grab your photos of snowmen. I'll be back in just one minute. Hang on. Oh, I am back. I need to make sure that we share all these amazing snowmen that you were making. Remember, that was your homework for yesterday, was to go outside in the snow and make some art. We didn't get that many photos in. I got quite a lot. So do please keep sending any photos you've got of snowmen or art that you did outside. Art is a really important subject. You mustn't forget about art, okay? We were talking about the brain, if you remember. I've just rubbed off the big picture of the brain that we had. But you know your brain is split into two halves. Halves, we're going to talk about that in maths today. Uh, well, the right side of your brain, which controls the left side of your body, this is the creative side. If you don't do art, then you're not developing your right side of your brain. So it's really important that art and these creative things, they're a vital part of the education as well. So please keep going. I'm going to keep saying good morning to people. Who else have we got? Ayab, good morning. Morning, uh, Tahira. Uh, Good morning, Musa Salah. Morning, Ayana. Morning, Mohammed M. Morning to Harris. Morning to uh, Khalid. Morning, Shaman. I could not go outside, so didn't do it. It wasn't allowed. Oh, I'm really, really sorry. You weren't allowed to go outside. That's a shame. Um, morning to Rida. Morning, Rania. Sir, it's your birthday. Happy birthday to Rania. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I'm not going to do the whole song. Uh, good morning, Mahamin. Morning to, yes, yeah, Samuel. Lovely that you're all saying happy birthday. Uh, morning. You sent your word to Google Classroom. That's really good. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, good morning, Ahmad. Alicine is here. Morning. Imran. Oh, Safia Razul. Good morning, Safia. Sorry, I got the name wrong. Uh, Samia, good morning. Morning. Uh, oh, you're joking. After I made that effort of singing you the happy birthday song. Ah. See, I just trust people here. Uh, good morning, Ari. Good morning, Naima. Uh, good morning. Who else have we got? Elbow, cough, elbow, cough. Ms. Cho, please complete your register on the Google Classroom, year three. Good point. Don't forget to do your register, um, although you can save it to the end of this video maybe, or just go and you could pop another tab, couldn't you? At the top, pop another tab if you're on a laptop or a computer, and then you can uh, do your register as well. 
four months until someone's birthday. Oh my gosh, how can you contain the excitement when it's only four months away? Happy birthday. Did you see my snowman? I might have. I might have. Let's have a little look. Let's have a little look at what we have got for a uh, snowman, shall we? In fact, normally the order is we do the news and then we look at the work. So I think that's what we're going to stick to. I'm just going to hang on for a couple more minutes because we normally wait until we get to 60 kids uh, and then we start uh, <laughs> all these happy birthdays coming in. Got to be very careful about being honest, don't we? Seven until yours, are Hill. Okay, but it's my birthday. Good. Oh, that, that is, that's good. That's good. That's good. And if it is your birthday, that's fantastic. Happy birthday then. I thought you said it wasn't. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. What else have we got? Oh, we're almost at our 60 point when we're going to start with the news. Um, eight till your birthday. Wow. The excitement. Oh, how on earth are we going to hold it? Only eight months away until your birthday. My goodness. Yours is January uh, 22nd. Oh, so we've missed yours. Happy birthday to you when you just had your birthday. Wow. What a fantastic month. We've got to 60 points, so I am going to start. So good morning, everyone. Snow day yesterday. Well done for going out, having some fun. Yeah, of course, the government says you're allowed to go out for exercise. It's really important that you do go out for exercise. You should not be locked up in your house the whole time. As long as you're staying a safe distance away from people, you're absolutely fine. Also, of course, because you're outside in the open air, it's harder to spread the infection. So the government has said you're allowed to go out for exercise as long as you're doing it with people in your bubble. You do not go out to exercise to meet up with friends and other bits of family, okay? So it's really important to go out and get some exercise. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, the news today. Well, of course, the main one is all about the snow. It covered Britain up and down the country. Children were having snow days. They were out sledging. If you go and have a look online, you can see all of the pictures of the sledging and the snowmen people built. I went on a walk yesterday. I saw some huge snowmen being built, some absolutely giant snowballs that people had rolled. Really good fun. You start with a small ball, don't you? And then you roll it and you roll it and it gets bigger and bigger because all that snow sticks to it. The moisture we learned yesterday helps the snow stick together and it becomes absolutely giant. Um, what else have we got? Ooh, more news about the vaccine. So I know I've, I've been reading here that some countries in the EU, that block that we, uh, that we left, have, uh, are saying that they're going to reduce the amount of vaccines that Britain can get. They're going to stop exporting them back to Britain. But luckily... We're starting to make our own one, the Oxford vaccine that we've made ourselves, that we're starting to sell around the world. So vaccines have been spreading out really well. The snow did disrupt the vaccine a little bit because a lot of old people weren't able to get to the halls and places for vaccination because the ground was icy. But I know my mum's a doctor and they've been going out to homes. Trying nurses have been going out into people's houses to get that vaccine, to spread it uh, around as much as possible so that we can protect as many people as possible. Um, so important that we encourage the spread of the vaccine because that is what is going to get us out of this mess. Um, what else have we got? Oh, I saw this. Now, you might have noticed um, when you're out and about a sign. Do you know what? I'm having to just shuffle through all my bits of paper. Where have I popped this sign? Give me two seconds. You might have spotted a sign that looks a bit like this. Has anyone seen a sign that looks like that? And do they know what do they think that sign represents? Number one, it's red, which tells you something. Number two, it's a triangle, which tells you something. And the picture on it tells you something else. So can anyone tell me in the chat, what do they think that this sign might mean that they have seen around the place? What might this sign mean? Let's have a little look. Got people saying no, they're not sure what it is. Maybe you can guess what it is. Can you have a guess? What do you think that sign might mean if you see it? Only old people. That's a really good guess. Care home, question mark. Look, I used your question mark there. That's really, really good. Um, yeah, you'll see that, uh, Hill, because your dad's always going around helping people, isn't he? Um, something to do with a care home. Yeah, it generally means that elderly people are in the area. Okay, so it's warning people. If you ever see a triangle sign, right? That is a warning sign. It's to warn you. You might see a triangle sign for school children or a big exclamation mark or all sorts of things to warn you. And also in Europe, red is a sign of danger. 
I say in Europe because not all around the world red is a sign of danger. If you went to Asia, for example, China or Vietnam, places like this, red is actually a sign of good luck and happiness. So when they see red, they're like, oh, that's good. We normally associate good with the colors like green, which we associate maybe with good things or bright colors. But red is generally a warning color for us. Um, and it tells you that there are old people in the area. So it's warning you to drive slowly, to be careful. Now, you might say, why is this news? Well, lots of people have said that this is a little bit insulting to old people because, of course, the picture of the old people, they've got the hunched backs and the, the walking sticks. And that it's not a very aspirational photo because if, if you stay healthy and you stay fit and you work your mind, you shouldn't end up looking like this. So there has been a big competition to see if we can have a new sign to represent old people. So this was the original one, which people said, I don't really like it because they look too old, they look too frail, and that's not a very good example of old people. So let's have a look at what we've gone for for some of the new ones. These are some of the competition um, entries. Here we've got zooming and having fun. Okay, there's an old person on a mobility scooper zooming around, trying to give a little bit more of a happier, positive impression of the elderly. So that is one of the competition uh, winners. We've also got, I quite like this one. Here is another one that we could have as a new sign showing, yes, they're elderly, but of course they're still able to have fun and uh, you know get out there and party. And I think the winning one from the competition, which I quite like, was this one here, which shows two elderly people still crossing the road, but they're dancing and they're having a little bit of fun. So I quite liked the idea of instead of showing elderly people to be a little bit useless and frail, the idea that even when you get old, you can still have fun, you can still party, you can still what, do what you like. So it might be quite nice. You could design a new uh, road crossing to let people, drivers know about um, possible old people in the area, that there's a care home nearby or that there's elderly living in the area. That would be a nice idea. Okay. Next, um, it's time to share the amazing work that you have been doing. Well done that we've got uh, 70 on you. Yet Miss Choates just said something really important, which is do not give out personal information in the chat. Okay, don't give out anything. You can say your names because we're all together, but don't give out any passwords. Certainly don't be giving out any addresses. Yeah, don't give out things like this. You just got to be very, very careful. Okay, don't give out addresses online. Vital importance. Okay, let's have a look at some of the work that you've been doing. Now, I'm really sorry because I don't have all the names, so maybe you'll know and you can say whose work it is. Here we go. Look at this first picture, looking so cool with the snowman head there, which is looking really, really cool. And there it is, the final uh, snowman with the body. Cute little snowman there, tiny little smile, little nose and eyes. Very cute little snowman, I like that. Um, look what else we have got. <laughs> this is, I like this one. This is Aob's stick that he sent in it's a photo of a stick in the snow so that's lovely isn't it i've remembered that that's aobs because that one made me laugh a lot um here we go i'm sorry i've forgotten whose this is but how cool is that snowman look at that cool hair using all of the twigs if that is yours then let us know look at that plain face i love all the details that have been used for that that is absolutely fantastic uh what have we got here oh wow i think that might be our hills if i remember right Look at that, it's got a hat on it, those two eyes, like a plain face, look at his drooping down arms, I like it. It's a little bit different um, to a traditional snowman, isn't it? Because normally we have three balls to make it up, but that is just one smooth, long shaft. Yes, there we go. Um, what else have we got here? <gasps> this is Miss Choate's snowman that Miss Choate sent in. Look at that, Miss Choate's gone all out with that nice big snowman wearing a scarf and hats as well. Lovely big smile, using the traditional carrot as well for the snowman. Thank you for that, Miss Cho, we love it. Who else have we got here? Who's that? Is that Anas there? We've got sitting next to his one. They're wearing matching red clothing. I really like that. That is very good. Nice red shirt, using the traditional carrot for the nose as well. Very nice snowman. What else have we got? Here is... Um, uh, Alisa, what, who is, sorry, is that? Alicia, Amina, um, Amani in 3C. Very nice, look at that. Resting up against a pole, what lovely scarf, keeping it nice and warm. Uh, yeah, and you're also wrapped up really nicely in there, aren't we? I love these snowmen. What else have we got? 
Ooh, having fun out in the street. Very cool. Look how much snow there is. It looks so much fun. It's what snow days are all about. It's preparing for having a little bit of a snowball fight there. I love it. What else? Oh, and that is now some trash that I was taking photos that I'm doing the year five and six. You don't want to see all that. That's something completely different. Okay. Right. Very good. So happy that you had fun. That's what snow days are all about. They're about sliding. They're about skidding on ice. They're about sledging. They're about all of that kind of thing. It's really important that you have days like that. So on to our lessons for today. Now, I need to keep it nice and tight. We need to be finished by uh, quarter two because I'm going to be going out with the year five and six, and we're going to go and try and build a snowman in the playground. But what are we going to do today? Well, we've got some maths. And because you're doing division in your work on the class page, I'm going to be looking at something that you'll look at next week. We're going to start to understand a little bit about fractions. Um, what we're doing in English uh, as well is we're going to start building up a story. Uh, Mr. Keeling and I did the spooky story series. So we're going to try and work a little bit more on writing that spooky story over this week because I've had lots of little bits and bobs coming in. But I want to see some nice solid stories now that we can really get our teeth into um, and see how you're getting on with your writing. Miss Cho is excited for some maths. And I think because Miss Cho is so excited, let's start with our maths. And what we are looking at is... Fractions, fractions, these wonderful, exciting things, a fraction. I am going to show you to start with a fraction, and I would like a little bit of discussion from you. Okay, I'm going to be reading what you're saying. What I want to know is, what is a fraction? What is this? What does it tell you? What do you know already about fractions? And I'm going to read some of your feedback, okay? Don't worry if you don't like fractions. We're going to start to understand them better. And before you know it, you are going to be a fraction master. So have a look at this fraction. What can you tell me about this fraction? What does it mean? What can you tell me? Let's have a little look at the chat. What have we got? Half quarter. A of has written. Don't forget to only write things once on the chat. Do not spam it. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Once. Um, fraction. Yes, very good. When you have half of a number, but what does that mean? What does half mean? Lots of you writing half, it's half sign is a fraction, halving a number that things into thirds or quarters, etc. Interesting. Got a free kick in your pocket and make a list for a new car. What does that mean, Sadia? Not quite sure how that links to fractions. Um, half, half, yeah, but what is half? Let's just get, I'm gonna go a couple more minutes, just having a look if any of you can go. I'm not sure, that's absolutely fine, Lowy. Don't worry. Because we're going to go over it. Half of two, um, Abu Bakr Khan has said, well, what does that mean? What is half of two? Two parts, Anasa said. Well, let's have a look. When we've got a fraction, here is my, oh, sorry, my big cake, okay? I've got a cake. And this thing here is known as the denominator. Denominator. Okay, the denominator, denominator. It'd be good if you say it, denominator. In fact, I call it the demon denominator. The demon denominator. Why do I call it the demon denominator? Well, it lives down below. So if you remember that the demon denominator always lives down below, that number at the bottom, there it is, is the demon denominator. Hmm. So what is this up at the top? Well, it is... The nice numerator. Oh, the nice numerator. So we've got the nice numerator up at the top, floating away in heaven. And then we've got the demon denominator who lives down below the earth. Okay, that's how I remember which they are. The denominator shows me how many parts whatever I've got has been split into. Okay, the denominator shows me how many parts whatever I've got has been split into. That might not quite make sense, but we're going to get there and we're going to develop that idea over time. So look, here's my cake. My denominator says two, so I've split it into two parts. Oh, wait a second. Here we go. I've now split it into two parts. Hmm, that's not quite right, is it? A fraction are two equal parts. So however many equal parts. The denominator shows us how many equal parts we have. Okay, I'm starting to get it a bit better. So a denominator shows us how many equal 
parts we have got. So I have got two equal parts. Overall, the nice numerator tells us how many bits I've actually taken. So out of a possible two, I have taken one. I've taken one out of two pieces. That's what a half looks like. Let me just do this again. Uh, people, please type, don't spam the chat with silly signals and things, yeah? Okay, let's have a look at this one. So now I'm gonna take one quarter. So my demon denominator shows me how many equal parts it's split into. So it's split into four equal parts. My nice numerator shows me how many bits I've got. So how many out of four have I got? I've got one out of four, okay? Let me do one more. Hmm, this one, I tell you what, let's do this the other way around. Again, I've got my whole. How many bits it split up into? Right, well, it's split into four parts. I know my demon denominator is going to be four. How many bits have I shaded out of the four? Oh, I've shaded three out of four. Okay? Look how simple this is, understanding fractions. It's really, really easy, isn't it? The demon denominator shows me how many parts I could have. The nice numerator shows me how many parts I've got. Okay? Let's see if you can have a little go now that you've seen that. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some questions on the board for you. We've got A, B, and C. Okay? I'm going to shade in a shape. And I would like you to tell me, yeah, well done, those of you who are getting it. I'd like you to tell me for A, B, and C what the fraction is. So you're going to write A equals B equals C equals. Okay? That's what I'd like you to do. Please do not spam the chat. Omar, you type it once and then that is it. Okay. Right, let's have a look. I'm going to make these um, four, three shapes. Sorry. I'm going to split this one like this, split this one like this, and I'm going to split this one like this. Now, in this one, I've shaded that much. In this one, I've shaded that much. And in this one, I've shaded that much. Can you have a look at those three shapes, A, B, and C? And can you tell me what fraction of the shape have I shaded? So what fraction of the shape have I shaded? Ahil, I'm not sure. Just focus on trying to do this for me, Ahil. So A equals, B equals, C equals. That's your job. Well, Alicina, don't worry, because what I'd like you to do is have a little go here. What I've shown you with this, here I've got one out of two shaded, so that is a half. Here I've got one out of four shaded, so that is a quarter. Here I've got one, two, three out of a possible four shaded. So have a look at these. Can you tell me what fraction I have got for each of these? A equals, B equals, C equals. What are they? Let's have a look. Now, Zubero, I need to know as a fraction, not just the number that's shaded, but what is it out of? Don't worry that you're late. That's absolutely fine. Don't, don't worry. Have a little look. So I don't want just two. What is it? Two slash. So I could write it like this, couldn't I? I could write this like this. One slash four on the computer. Can you have a little go? Ayub has gone for one third, two fourths. Good lad, Ayub. Well then. Yeah. Only write it once now, Ayub. Very good. Yeah, sorry that there's lag, Mohammed, but I think that might be on your end as well there, please. Um, Ayab, once. Goodbye. Uh, Arhil, for C, three out of four. Very close. Actually, it's... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you now what it is, so don't worry. So A, my nice numerator is how many I've got. So how many have I got? I've got one. How many could I have had? Three. So it's one out of three. Or well, you can write it on a computer like that, one slash three. Let's have a look at B. How many have I got? I've got two. How many could I have? One, two, three, four. Ah, two out of four. Let's look at C. How many have I got? I've got one, two, three, four. Out of, how many could I have had? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so A is one out of three. B is two out of four. C is three out of five. 
Is this starting to make a little bit of sense? Okay, hope it is making a little bit of sense. I've just slightly forgotten um, what I was going to do next, but not to worry. We're going to just keep looking at this in a little bit more detail for a couple more minutes before we move on to our English. So um, let's rub some of this out. Let me take, for example, I'm going to take a group of children and I'm going to draw them on the board for you. So we have got a girl, a girl, um, a boy, another girl, and another boy. Okay? Uh, he wears glasses, she wears glasses, uh, she's got a hat, he's got a hat, and uh, she's also got a hat. Okay? Can you see my five children? As a fraction, how many children have I got and how many is it out of? Let's have a look at this, okay? If I have all of the children in class, so I'm saying, morning, Ishmael, morning, morning, Mohammed, morning, morning, Alessina, morning. Yeah, this is my whole class, five children. How many children have I got in my class? Five. How many children have turned up to school today? One, two, three, four, five. Ah, I've got five out of five children in class. Yes, right. Big question for you then. What fraction of my class, actually, I'm going to do the first one. You don't answer this. I'm going to do the first one. So my question to myself, you don't need to answer this, is, my tie's not done up very well, is it? My question to myself is, what fraction of my class are boys? Okay, that's my question. What fraction of my class are boys? So I'm going to answer it. Let's have a look. I know I've got five, I'm going to put here for boys. I know I've got five children in my class, so my denominator will be five. Okay, because there's definitely five children in the class. Now, what fraction of boys? Let's have a look. We've got one, two boys. Two out of the five children are boys. Okay, two out of the five children are boys. Question for you. What fraction of the class are girls? So I know my whole class is five out of five. How many boys? Two out of five. So what fraction of the class are girls? Can you write in the chat what fraction of the class you think are girls? Remember, if I ask a question for me, then it's for me. If I ask it for you, then you answer it. So what fraction of the class are girls is the question. A lot of people saying two thirds, uh, two fifths, sorry. It is not two fifths. Don't worry that you're late. That's absolutely fine. Just focus now. Um, let's have a look. What fraction is very good? We're starting to get this. Well done, Sultan. Oh my gosh, you're getting so good at this. So what fraction are girls? Well, three out of five are girls. That is the fraction of my class that are girls. Three fifths, three out of five. Okay, are you ready for a new question? So remember, the demon denominator at the bottom is how many I could have. The nice numerator at the top is what I've got. So I could have five children. How many are girls? Three out of five are girls. Okay, are you ready for a new question then? How many children in my class have glasses? What fraction of my class wear glasses? What fraction of my class wear glasses? Can you answer that question for me? I'm so proud of how well you guys are doing with this. The question is what fraction of my class wear glasses? And the answer is, Bam, 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 bam. Very good. Very good. Well done, guys. You're absolutely smashing this. Yeah. What fraction of the class wear glasses? Well, the fraction of my class, you well done, is two fifths. Very good. Two fifths. I love it. Do you think you can answer me one more then? Oh, I'm going to give him a hat as well, her a hat as well, sorry. What fraction of my class? Next question. What fraction of my class wear hats? So what fraction of my class wear hats? What fraction of my class wear hats? Quick question for you. What fraction of my class are wearing hats? Dawood Ali, straight in. Harris in, Subhan in, very good. What fraction of my class wear? Zubero, very good. Abdullah, yes, Jamila, brilliant. Anas, brilliant. Yeah, Charmin, yep, yeah. Dawood, brilliant. Ah, oh, guys, this is so good. Those of you who are saying, I'm scared of fractions, I don't like fractions, I don't know fractions. Today, you have started to understand what a fraction is, and you are able to spot 
fractions. Absolutely fantastic. What a great start. Okay, I need to move on because I want to get myself back out into that snow. So I'm going to move on to English. Now, again, I'm going to continue the work that we were doing last week around spooky stories. Okay, I'm going to continue the work that we were doing with spooky stories. And seeing as you're starting to do some Mrs. C lessons for English as well, I'm going to set it up like Mrs. C would set it up. Okay, and this is what I would like us to do. We have you okay, Miss? Yeah, we're just in here. The, you're the ones nearest to me, Miss. Not the ones nearest to the door. So what we need to do, we are going to split. Uh, oh, what do we do? That's a, that's a good question. So we are going to write a spooky story, and this is how I'm going to split it up. Today, we're going to have a little look at some settings and character. I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. Tomorrow, we're going to have a look at uh, building up suspense a little bit more and asking questions. Then on Thursday, we're going to go into some dialogue. And then on Friday, we're going to talk about the beast, the spooky entity that exists in our story. So I'm going to split it into four different sections. And by the end of the week, we're going to write ourselves a whole big story. OK, right. So number one is all about the setting. And if I'm writing a spooky story, well, I need a kind of spooky setting. Could some of you please suggest for me some spooky settings for my story? What are some good traditional spooky settings? Let's have a little look in the chat. Where would be a good place if I was going to write a spooky story to set it? Where would be a good place? Hey, Ab, I've asked you already to stop spamming the chat. You need to stop now. Where would be a good spooky setting? Let's hear. Haunted Mansion. Alicina is straight in it. I love it. Graveyard. Oh, these are so good for some spooky settings, yeah? Haunted Mansion is a great one. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, Haunted House. I love it. Um, a huge forest. This is a good one. A black house with green goo everywhere. I love it. Creepy houses. Attic Hussein, that would be a really creepy, creepy story setting, wouldn't it? My goodness, imagine being in Attic. Um, what else have we got? Halloween, yeah. Abandoned Castle, yeah. Oh, these are such great spooky settings. I wonder why they make such good spooky settings. I was thinking about all of those ones that you came up with there. You said graveyards, haunted houses, abandoned castles. Yeah, big, deep, dark forests. They're good because they're dark. They're good because they're old, because they're crumbling, okay? Spooky stories are best in a dark place where there might be all sorts of shadows about. They're good in a place where it's old and crumbling, bits are falling together. I'm not gonna set my spooky story in a, a lovely rainbow land full of unicorns and tweeting birds. No, no, no. Remember, we are doing a bit of show, not tell here. We can tell by the setting what our story is going to be. And you choosing the right setting is really important for your story. So I don't really mind which setting we're going for. But the first thing I'd like to have is I want to have some adjectives, some really good spooky adjectives. And these are going to help me to build the start of my story. So what I'd like now is some good spooky adjectives. I'm going to give you some spooky adjectives, OK? We could have uh, dark. I could have uh, dingy. OK, I might have creepy. It was a creepy forest. Can you come up with as many adjectives to help me to describe a spooky setting? And I'm going to come up with some. I'm going to write some of these words down. Harris has gone with a fantastic word here. Sinister. I love that one. Sinister. Very good. Um, what else have we got? Abandoned. Yeah. Scary. Yeah, kind of scary to describe it. Very nice. Keep going. I don't want sentences. I just want adjectives, please. Haunted is a good adjective. Haunted. I like this. Very nice. Uh, smoky. Yeah. I can, I've got that idea of something that's smoky or I'm going to put misty. I like the idea of fog. Yeah, when we were doing pathetic fallacy and talking about the weather, yeah, if it was foggy and dark, that tells me a lot about it. Um, yeah, bloody abandoned is a good one. 
Yeah, I like things that are abandoned. Because why was it abandoned? What happened? Yeah, it makes the reader think about it. Bloody. Yeah, that's a good one. Creepy. Um, accursed. Yeah, I like cursed. I don't quite know how to spell it though. Cursed. Yeah, you might have spelled it right there. Scary. We've had that one already. Gooey. I'm not sure if gooey always necessarily means that it's going to be scary or spooky. Because I might ask them, you know, I might be making something and I've got gooey fingers. Gloomy. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a good word. Gloomy. I like that one. Gloomy. Creepy. Murky. Oh, nice. Now we're getting some good work popping through. These are fantastic. All of yours are really good. Abandoned, dark, black, lonely. I love these ideas of dark, black, shadowy things are really good for spooky stories, aren't they? I'm going to pop then uh, lonely. Uh, lonely. That's really good. Yeah. Okay. We'll pause there then. So I've got a load of adjectives. Remember, I'm not looking for sentences. I'm just looking for adjectives. So I'm going to use these in my first couple of sentences, some of these adjectives. The next thing I'd like to do, I'm going to be in a forest, or I could be in a haunted house. I'm going to be in a forest, okay? And I'm going to use a bit of personification, okay? Because, well, I'm going to start with uh, something along the lines of, um, it was a dark gloomy night the as the who could it be some children as the children walked through the creepy crawly forest okay so that's how i might start but you know what i'd like i want some personification and if i'm in a forest i want to think about the trees i want to think about the leaves the plants the things and i want some personification so let me give you an example of some personification i could have i could say um the trees arms tapped me on the shoulder. Yeah, I like this idea of the tree tapping you on the shoulder. It's not actually tapping, but do you remember, think about it, when it's dark and it's nighttime and it's a bit scary and a branch hits you, you're like, what's that? So I like that, I'm gonna say the tree tapped me. The tree tapped me on the shoulder. Could you think of some personification as I'm walking through this dark forest? What kind of words could I have that would be personification, something that maybe the tree is doing or the plant is doing that's like a human, but not a human. Maybe the wind could be doing it. What else could I have? Some personification. Do you remember we looked at personification last week? Um, what could we have? Personification, when things are described as if they're a human. You're absolutely right, Mist. Uh, the movement, the tree looked like it was shaking its hair. I like that. The tree shake, shook its hair. I'm gonna pop that down. The tree shook its hair. Nice one. Let's have a few more personification. Ah, oh, I'm a, the grass bit his foot. Love it. The grass bit his foot. I can just imagine that as I'm walking through. My everything's fine, and then I feel a bit of grass touch me. Like, oh! Yeah, and I'm thinking, what is that? These are some really good ones. Let me have a keep having look look through here. I might miss some of these because so many are coming in. What have we got? The wind ran behind me. This is good. The wind ran behind. Super. Very good. The tree grabbed me. Yeah. Should have put tree grabbed. Sorry, my writing's a bit too small now. I didn't make a big enough box, did I? The tree trunk laid low where it was hiding. That is so good. That is really good. Now, now wolves do howl. So that's not quite personification because wolves do howl. Um, Ahil, stop talking about that. I want you to focus on the personification now. Put him in a big bin. The wind waved. Okay. The flowers bowed down to him. Oh, that's nice. The flowers bowed. Okay, do you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna take all of this that you have given me and I'm gonna try and turn it into the start of a story. And then what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try and write the start of a story as well. So I'm gonna take some of your words. Um, I'm gonna say, it was a mm, creepy, it was a dark comma, 
creepy night. It was a dark, comma, creepy night. When I'm going to have two characters in my story. I'm going to have um, Lucy and Bob. Okay. When Lucy and Bob went for a walk. Did they go for a walk? Um, a meander? A stroll. They went for a stroll. Went for a stroll. Now I'm going to use some of the personification. Um, ooh, ooh. Adverbial to start with. So while walking, while walking, uh, while walking, the sinister, I love that word, the sinister trees tapped them on the shoulder. Okay? Nice, simple start to my story. It gets me straight into it. It was a dark, creepy night when Lucy and Bob went for a stroll. While walking, I verbal, the sinister tree tapped them on the shoulder. <gasps> Maybe my next bit could be, what's that? Lucy said. So can you give me a, a little two sentences to start the story off? You've got these two characters walking through a forest, okay? See if you can use an adverbial like I've done. I want you to use some of those adjectives. Can you describe what it was like in this forest? And then use a bit of personification to tell me something that happened. As they walked, did the flowers bow to them? As they walked, did the wind run behind them? Yeah, as they walked, did the trees shake their hair? Okay, can you come up with a little story? Remember, we're focusing on walking in a forest. We're not in a house. We're not with creepy clowns, none of that stuff. We're just in a forest walking through. Could you give me two sentences? And can I have a little read? of what you've got, okay? I'm gonna take you a little bit about, that's good, Noah, that you know what your story's gonna be about, save it. I'd like to have a little go at making me a sentence now so I can have a look at how you've used a couple of adjectives and a bit of personification. You don't need to use this in your final story, but I want you to show me that you can use it now. So I'm gonna read some of these. This is from uh, Rainbow. It was a very dark, lonely night. Rose and Max were hunting. They heard the bushes waving, the wind, and they hid behind the big tree. This is really good. We're missing a couple of little words in there, but what I like is your ideas there are absolutely fantastic. Also, I'd split that into two sentences, but that is such a great start. It was a very dark, lonely night. Rose and Max were hunting. When they heard the bushes waving in the wind, I would write, then they hit the big tree. This is so good. I love your dot, dot, dot for suspense. Fantastic. Uh, what else have we got? Hey, Mohammed, write two sentences. Mr. Jordan, I've done a spooky story. Yeah, but I want these two sentences now. Rainbow sent two sentences. The story will be 20 minutes. Yeah, okay, but I want these two sentences now. Musa, where are my sentences? Come on. What else have we got? Where is, um, I don't know who Naz is. Naz, can you focus on writing stuff that's in the lesson and not putting random comments, please? He saw the beast following him. Okay, but I want to describe the setting a little bit. Tell me some adjectives to describe the forest. Oh, okay, so Suhan has got, it's a, it was a dark night. The lights flickered. I love that idea of lights flickering, like stars flickering. That's really good. Let's keep going. I'm gonna give you a minute because I know it takes you a little time to write it into the chat. So I'm just gonna hang on here so I can see what people have written and I'm not rushing ahead, okay? What have we got? So I want a little sentence. Just write, if you want, just to write me one. That's absolutely fine. And so I can uh, read the one. Take your time. Don't rush it. Let's, let me read a couple of them have come through whilst you're waiting. What have we got here? Alicine has written, the abandoned sinister mansion towered above me when the wind pushed me into it. I love this, right? An abandoned mansion. The idea of it towering over you. Yeah, it's a bit like personification, isn't it? And then it, the wind pushed you into it. That's really, really good. All right, what else have we got? Let's keep reading it. It was a dark night until zombies came. Well, we're not talking about zombies right now. Um, one gloomy December night when Emma and Max were walking in a creepy, eerie forest, suddenly they felt the breeze behind their back. Oh, I love that. Really good start to a story. 
Bob and Lucy heard noises and they were scared. So they hid under their bed. Well, that would be really good if they were still in their bedroom. I like it. But we're going to be in the forest now. But that, what a great start. I love this. Aya, it was a creepy, murky day. Good words from the adjective list. I love that. The police were running from the big tree. Um, he was running fast from the east and the west. The forest and the monsters ate them. Well, you're rushing to the end. Don't rush to the end. This is a really important part about building it. We've only done our first two sentences. We've got loads more to write and fill in. Don't get to the monster eating them because that's what we're doing on Friday. It's going to take time to get to that. Once upon a time, there was a spooky house and a cold-hearted vampire. Okay, try and describe the setting for me and a little bit of personification, Samuel, but that's really nice. If you've got once upon a time, what type of story is that? I think it's a fairy tale. Now, we're not going to write a fairy tale, but that's a lovely sentence. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got? He was walking in a dark and misty forest, and then suddenly the tree tapped their backs. Nice one, Anis. Well done. What have we got? Ahmed said, once upon a time, there was two people called Lucy and Joey. They were fishing for fish in the forest, the dark forest, and then some grass bit both of their feet. I love that. The idea of the grass nipping away at them. Really good. What do we got from Mika? Um, it was a dark, creepy night. There were two people named Bob and Max. As they walked, the tree grabbed Bob. Okay. Keep going with these, and I'm going to read a few more as they keep coming in. As we write this story, what we need to make sure is we're not rushing to the end all of a sudden, that we're slowly building it up, that we're layering the details in, and that we're not just jumping to the final part. Okay? I haven't even begun. I'm just talking, I've introduced the characters. Yeah, it was Lucy and Bob going for a stroll. I've added a little personification at the start. Slowly and surely, each lesson, I'm going to build this up and we're going to build a bigger and bigger story. And then at the end of the week, I'm going to leave you to write your own um, spooky story. Okay, don't worry. Um, you can make it as scary as you want. What have we got there? It was a deep forest full of wolves. They wore, they were dead and scary wolves howling away from the bodies. Okay. I need to pause now. Um, well done, all of you who've sent in your sentences. If you keep sending them in, I'm going to... That's really nice there, Shamin. Very nice. To be continued. I like that. Dot, dot, dot. I'm going to keep reading them as they come in, okay? Don't worry if it takes you a little bit of time. I just need to go now to get back to my class because it is quarter two. Um, uh, my, the homework for you to do today, I'm not setting a particular topic. We'll talk about a new topic tomorrow. But what I would just like you to do is to get onto your class pages to make sure that you're starting the work. We're doing the Mrs. C work for English. We're doing some white rose uh, maths that's gonna be going on and there's some reading for you on there. Can you make sure that you register yourself on the Google Classroom page? Okay, make sure you get onto Google Classroom. If you're still struggling with Google Classroom, make sure you send us an email, but you should all be logged on now. Ms. Cho and I made a Google Classroom how to do Google Classroom video. Okay, so if you go onto the YouTube um, and look at the school page, Ms. Cho and I have done a how to use Google Classroom video. And then you can use that to watch and show you exactly how you log on to Google Classroom. Tomorrow, we're gonna to speed this up. I'll have a little bit more time. We're gonna do some topic stuff as well. Uh, we'll do some news. I'll show your work. Well done for getting on today. I know it's been hard work. We've really been pushing it. We've done fractions. We've been looking at adjectives. We've been looking at personification. We've been writing sentences. So lots of hard work today. And um, that's maybe because we missed yesterday. Tomorrow, we'll have a little bit more fun as well. Um, can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Well done. Keep posting. If you've been writing your sentences, don't give it up now. Keep posting it so Miss Cho, Miss Duncan can still read it. I'm going to go. Bye bye, everybody. It's really nice to see you all. Can't wait for tomorrow. If you've got any ideas of things you'd like to do, pop it into Google Classroom. Let me know about it. Can't wait to see you tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock on the dot. Let's see if we can push those numbers higher than ever. Bye, guys. Please keep writing your story if you popped it down. Yeah, write your story. Oh, it's over here, isn't it? Keep writing it. Don't give up. I'm going to go back to classroom now, but Miss Cho, Miss Duncan will be about for a bit. Bye, guys. See you.